This song says, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. And I'll tell you, I am much closer to the people here in our church home than my own family, my blood relative family, because we have a, um, a bond, we have a, a same purpose, we have the same heart. We've been um, baptized in the um, blood of Jesus Christ and we're saved from our sins and we're going to be together. And if we can't get along down here and be brothers and sisters in Christ, what, what are we going to do? I just don't know. I just don't understand it. I just think we ought to love one another, love the sinner, love the sick, pray for everybody. And I'm just so glad you're here because it's it's a bittersweet thing. It's the last night of camp meeting. And uh, I know some of us are tired and some of us are weary and some of us are excited and waiting for tomorrow. And I know the Lord's done a work. I've heard people talking about how the Lord's working and answering prayers. We feel like the preacher's told on every one of us to these preachers that's come because he's been, each one of them stepped on us somehow or another. But that's God. You know, that's God. I know Steve didn't do that because God orchestrates all that stuff. Put something in his heart when he told me that sermon was in his heart I thought oh boy here we here we go this is what it's about but we're gonna stand and sing family of God Tell them you're glad. Shake their hand. We ain't got to wait on fellowship. Come on. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain. Cleansed by His blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm part of the family. Amen. Good to see you tonight. Appreciate you being here. It has been a good camp meeting. God has been faithful. God has been good. And we want to we just need to thank him and praise him for what he's done. I'm going to tell you right now, it has uh it it has been a lot of uh there's been a lot of effort put into this and I appreciate everybody. Uh, Brother Wesley, we've had a bunch of caulkers around here for the last two weeks, I can tell you. Folks been in here working and serving and giving, and I'm going to tell you right now, I appreciate everyone. There's no way I could thank everybody because there's been so many people involved, but thank you. If you have been here and you've been serving, I just want to thank you for doing what you've done, and uh, it's, uh, it, it's really been a good camp meeting, and I, I appreciate everybody uh, and your service, but uh, most of all... Most of all, I am thankful for the Lord Jesus Christ because he has been faithful, amen, and uh, looking forward to the service tonight. We're getting ready to uh, go to the Lord in prayer, so uh, we need to uh, ask the Lord to prepare our hearts for the message. Uh, appreciate Brother Wesley. Y'all pray for him tonight, amen. He's been driving back and forth, and, and man, I'm going to tell you right now, I, I'm surprised he made it here tonight after the last two nights and, and the way he's preached and the way the Lord's used him, but y'all keep uh, Brother Wesley in prayer. Well, that's, uh, huh? and his wife. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry about that. Yes, ma'am. Remember his wife and, uh, uh, she's, uh, she's had to put up with him on that trip back and forth. So, uh, but anyway, uh, we, we do need to ask God to prepare our hearts. It, you know, God's been here every service. And I, I, I know that he's here tonight and I know that he still wants to do a work. We've not yet attained. Amen. There's still work to be done in all of us. And so we just need to make sure that our hearts are open to what he wants to do. So I invite you to come to the altar tonight as we open up in prayer.
Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you for the way that you have been at work here in this camp meeting and the services, Lord, in each one of them, Father. You have, you have been present, you have been at work, and you have, uh, uh, you have uh, changed our lives, and we thank you for it. God, there's so much that you have done over the last two weeks, Lord, the way that you have touched hearts and lives, the way that you have mended and, and restored, and, and God, uh, the souls that have been saved, the decisions that have been made, you get all the praise and all the glory. God, we appreciate these men of God and their faithfulness to uh, share the messages that you've laid upon their heart. We thank you that they have, have sought you out and they have sought the messages that we stand in need of. And God, they've been faithful to deliver those messages. But Lord, they would be nothing but just a, a sermon if it was not for the fact that the Holy Spirit was at work. And we just want to give you praise for that. Thank you for the men of God. Just continue to bless each one of them that's been a part of this camp meeting. Bless Brother Wesley tonight. God, just anoint him afresh. Just give him uh, strength tonight. Give him clarity of mind, dear God. Fill him with the Holy Spirit and just use him once again, Lord, to speak to our hearts. Uh, Lord, we just, it, it is, it's exciting to be here tonight, Lord. We know that you're at work here, but God, it is, uh, it, it is kind of a, a tough thing to know that this has come to an end. We've had a wonderful two weeks and we just give you the praise and the glory for it. Thank you for every meal that has been served. Uh, we thank you for every song that has been sung. We thank you for every testimony that's been given. God, you get all the praise and all the glory for it because it's you at work, God. It's not anything to do with us. It's all about you. And so, God, we just want to give you praise tonight. Thank you most of all for Jesus Christ. We just thank you for our Savior tonight. And, Father, I pray that Jesus would be glorified here. I pray he would be lifted up, exalted here tonight through the preaching, through the ministry of song. God, you just, uh, you just have your way and let Jesus Christ be glorified. And we'll thank you and praise you for that. Search our hearts tonight, God. Father, we do need you to continue your work in us. We know you're going to be faithful to do that. You're going to be faithful to perform that which you have begun. And so God, we just ask tonight that you would just continue to deal with our hearts. I pray God that souls might be saved tonight. There's about a lot of seed been sown. We know that you can give the increase, God. And so Father, uh, you save souls. You, uh, you strengthen the church tonight. And God, you just have your way and we'll thank you and praise you for it all. We love you. Thank you for loving us. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. and turn to 21, page 21. Let's stand as we sing, please. <clears throat>
start to say good morning, but good night. <laughs> I just want to say I love the Lord tonight, and I am so glad He loves me. Amen. Amen.
Jesus and me, amen. He said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, are you glad to be here? Amen. amen. Old Steve Gunner, every time he'd preach here, he'd say, boy, I'd rather be here than be in jail. Amen. amen. <laughs> that's, got it. that's pretty good, right? Yes, sir. If you got any sense, you'd rather be here than be in jail. Amen. Well, appreciate you being here tonight. I know uh, uh, seemed to be a little bit down in numbers tonight, but that's all right. God's promised to meet with us right here. Amen. Amen. Two or three are gathered together in his name. And I'll be there. That's what he said. I'll be in the midst of you. So praise the Lord. He wants to work in our hearts tonight. Well, folks, uh, it wraps up tonight, and, and uh, we'll be back uh, to our regular schedule services tomorrow, 8.30 in the morning for the early worship, 9.45 for the Sunday school. We've got 10.45 worship, and then tomorrow night be back at 6 o'clock. Everything be inside tomorrow night or tomorrow, so uh, you don't have to worry about it being cold in the morning or anything. Well, other than the normal coldness that it is in there, but anyway, <laughs> amen. So, uh, but anyway. It's been good to be under the old shelter, amen? amen. I love it. I'm going to tell you right now, we could just start in April and go through September and be all right with me, just meet amen. down here, amen? amen? Boy, the numbers would just start declining then. Yeah. <laughs> Gotten soft, had not we? We like them soft chairs, like that AC and all that good stuff, amen? Yeah. All right. Well, let's... Uh, uh, all of our offerings are going to the men of God, and so please give tonight as you uh, feel like the Lord is leading you to give. You be obedient to the Lord, and if our ushers will come, we'll receive our offering. <laughs> Mission Baptist Church, uh, the church that we planted up in Archdale, they are having their homecoming services tomorrow, so y'all keep them in prayer. It'll be their uh, third homecoming, I believe it is, and so... Uh, Excited about that, so y'all keep Mission Baptist in prayer. All right, Brother Steve, you ask the Lord to bless us on us. Appreciate that. Appreciate you giving. You know what? I'm amazed. Them old Kentucky Fried Chicken Buckets, they've held up now for about 10 years. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Put that old greasy chicken in it and the whole bottom falls out of it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, it is good to have all of you here tonight, but uh, Wesley's brother's here tonight. Kevin, is that right? Yes, Kevin and his wife. I think she just went up to the building up there, but it's good to have you all with us. And from what I understand, now, now Kevin's a preacher too. He'll let it roll too. So good to have you with us, brother. Appreciate you being here. Now, you pastor a church? Okay. All right. Well, it's sure good to have you all with us. All of you folks from Oswald, we appreciate you being here. All right. Miss Donna's going to come minister in song. 
Brother Wesley, you come after that, all right?
1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, And now about a faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. And charity is love. And when we're crossing over and we're in heaven, faith is gone because our faith's been made sight. Hope that we had is gone because we're there. And the greatest of these is love. And that's why. It's because that's what we'll be in love with Jesus and He's in love with us and we'll be in love forevermore. Amen. One day you walked a long dusty road when you should have been walking on streets made of gold. One day you hung on a cruel, rugged cross when you should have been on a mighty throne. You wore a crown of thorns where a crown of jewels should have been when you could have said, I'm not guilty. You bore the sin of Jesus, one day I will see you on that throne I will fall down on my knees To worship you alone One day I will cast my crowns At your precious nail-scarred feet All you've done for me one day. One day goodbyes will be gone at last, and every fallen tear will be far in the past. The choir will Finally see you face to face One day will be as a thousand And a thousand as one day But that will not be long enough To thank you for the price you pay Jesus, one day I will Amen. Appreciate you, preacher. Bless you, brother. God bless you. Love you. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. It's good to be under the tabernacle tonight. Amen. Good to be back with you folks tonight. Good to see you this evening on this Saturday afternoon. Amen. Appreciate privilege to be in his house. And I, I, I agree with the gentleman that said he'd rather be here than be in jail. I appreciate that. Amen. Uh, I'd rather be here than be in the best hospital there is around. I mean, the best one they got. I'd rather be right here than I would be there uh, tonight, but uh, I'm glad to be here. I'd rather be here anywhere else, just to be honest with you. Uh, but it is good to be here. Thank you for the singing tonight. Thank you for the choir singing, the musicians that played. And boy, thank God for that and the special singing. Oh, what a Savior. Amen. Uh, boy, I tell you, they... There's a song, did I mention that I love him? Have y'all ever heard that song, did I mention that I love him? And a part on there in that song, it says there's not enough words uh, that can be said about him. Then it said there's not enough notes in the music. I thought about that one time. Uh, you think about all the preaching that's been preached uh, down through the years. You think about that. You think about all the singing that's been sang, sung. <laughs> Hey man, I'm from Ardell County. You think about that, all the singing that's been sung about him, and man, it ain't even covered him, amen? I mean, we ain't even come close to covering him. Oh, what a Savior we serve tonight, amen? Thank God for that, oh, hallelujah. And one day we're going to get to see him. <laughs> My, I tell you, one of these days, uh, we're going to get to see him face. Job said that. He said, I'm going to see him for myself. Y'all yeah. read that over in the book of Job. I'm talking about man lost everything, but he found some encouragement in the fact that there's going to be a better day. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I may mention that a little bit tonight, but I'm telling you, the best is yet to come yeah. for those that's been saved by the grace of God. Amen. I, let me, I tell, you, I tell you, I got so much. This, I hate we quitting tonight. Amen. I had we quitting tonight. Boy, I was at a, a, a one of them fireworks shows. Y'all ever been to one of them? And the uh, first one I ever been to, one of them biggins. And uh, they was shooting ups back when I worked uh, for the city of Kannapolis and the fire department. We was there standing by for that thing and they was shooting them off. And I, I was just standing there like a big eyed boy in a pie factory. I mean, I couldn't believe how them big things going off and that loud how sound. And I sat there and the whole time I was standing there, people kept saying, how you just wait. It's going to get better. You just wait. It's going to get better. They kept saying that. And what that's talking about is the finale. Yeah, man. And more I stood there and all of a sudden, boom, boom. And I mean, just one after another, them things kept. And you know what they're saying? They're saying the best is yet to come. Boy, I'm telling you, I'm glad we can enjoy ourselves down here. I'm glad we can get in on it down here. I'm glad the Bible says we can set in some heavenly places out down here, friend. I'm telling you, you know the reason it's cause of that hope that we know we're going to have and that faith that we know that'll stand but friend I'm telling you that the best is yet to come and that's when we get to see him face to face I'm telling you there's a day coming there's a day coming alright I got two places I got to get you folks out of here you got to be at church in the morning and I got to get you home get you rested up the pastor of the church be mad if I keep you all out all night and so so I need you to turn to two places tonight in your Bible. We're not going to stay there. Just read one and then we'll go right to the other one. But turn first of all, if you would, to Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter number 1. And when you find your place there, you just hold your finger for just a few moments. And then I want you to turn to Hebrews chapter number 6. Titus chapter number 1. We'll be in verse 1. And then in Hebrews chapter number 6. While you find your place there, let me say once again, thank you so much for the kindness that you folks have showed how my wife and I. Thank you so much. I tell you how the gifts, thank you last night for the gifts that how you sent home with us. And I, I can't say it enough. I'm so appreciative, so humbled, and, and just how the love that you folks have showed us and how the opportunity that we've had to be here. Preacher, thank you. How, boy, I appreciate it. Thank you. 
you, ma'am. I, I appreciate y'all showed so much kindness to us. And we, I, we plum feel special around here. And uh, I, I appreciate it. And you, you, it's cause you folks. And I, I tell you, you folks love preaching. Amen. I know you do. I, I preach in some places where I don't think they love to preach. Uh, but you folks love some preaching around here. And uh, like I told you again, y'all about kill a man. I'll be honest with you. And, uh, but I like it. Amen. I like it. If I, 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 if I kick the bucket up here tonight, that's all right. I'll just go out doing what I enjoy doing. Hallelujah. Uh, but I appreciate it. And I, I'm telling you, it's been an honor uh, to get to meet you. Some of the folks uh, that we've known, that we, we, we've uh, acquainted with, been in the service with us. And I appreciate that. Folks come from our church. It's good to have my brother, it's already said, and his wife tonight. And, and, uh, and then just get to meet you folks from Hope Baptist Church. It's been a joy and a privilege to do that uh, this week. And I, I'm honored. I, I'm honored. And I, I tell you, closing the thing down and, and uh, preaching the last night, just getting a preach period, I, I appreciate it and, and count it an honor to have been with you for these last uh, two nights and then to be back here tonight. I'm not going to ask you to stand tonight since we've got two places in the Scripture. Just keep your seat if that's all right. Uh, if y'all are good with that tonight. Titus chapter number 1. Uh, Titus chapter number 1 is the first place that I want to be this evening. And then right when we get done with that, we'll flip right back over to Hebrews chapter number 6 and read that for you this evening. And then uh, we'll, we'll get into the message. The Bible says in Titus chapter number 1, verse 1, the Bible says, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Now turn with me over. I flip over to Hebrews chapter number six and verse number thirteen. The Bible says, give you a moment just to get there. Hebrews six, uh, chapter number thir- or chapter six, verse number thirteen. Chapter six, verse thirteen in the book of Hebrews. The Bible says, for when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath of confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God, willing more abundantly, how to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. I'm going to ask my brother if he would stand and pray for me, Preacher Kevin. Ahem. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Thank you for the prayer. Now, out of these two portions of scriptures I've read you tonight, out of Titus chapter number one, and then out of Hebrews chapter number six, and I realize tonight how that these two passages of scripture are very familiar to you folks if you've been in church for any amount of time. But there's one specific thing that is mentioned in both of these how that I'd like to be the heart of the message tonight. In Titus chapter number one, verse two, we find these words, which God that cannot 
lie. And in Hebrews chapter number 6 and verse number 18, we find how these verses here where it says, which it is impossible for God to lie. I just want to preach on a real simple, simple thought how tonight with the help of the Lord, and this is the thought of the message tonight, the Lord will do what He said He will do. The Lord will do what He said how He will do. Now would you agree with me tonight that we are living in a day and hour that lying has become popular. Amen. I'm talking about lying here and lying there. I'm just telling stuff that is not true. As a matter of fact, it's so popular how to the point that you and I really don't know what we can believe and what we cannot believe. You said, and I'm talking about in the world. I understand the Bible, but I'm talking about in this world. I, may I say this to you tonight? We find lies in our politics. Now, I ain't going to stand up here and get off on that, which I could, but I'll leave that for your preacher to do that when he feels I led. But we find lying in our politics. We find lying in our public broadcasting. I'm talking about our news outlets, our, our, our newspapers, you know, how you, you see a story, you see something that's going on, and if you're familiar with it, you'll find how that that story is not always accurate. Matter of fact, how they try to make the news more interesting by adding the little twist how to a social media. We realize you can't believe everything how that you see on the social media. And so lying is very popular. How or false reports are very popular how in our social media and public broadcasting. We find that lying or, or false reports are, are found in our product lines. How many of you tonight have ever bought a product how based on a commercial that you have seen or, or a label that you have read how to get it home and find out how that what you thought it was ain't really what it was. Amen. Anybody like that? Alright, let me throw one out to you that rings a bell to me tonight. Anybody in here got a mild pillow? Yeah, man. Me too. <laughs> and it's said it to be the best night's sleep that you've ever had. Anybody ever heard that? I mean, I heard that. I seen that commercial. And the more that I heard that I fella talking about that, the more it eat at me. And the more I thought I could stand one of them best yeah. night's sleeps. And boy, I could stand to go to bed. How the older I get, the harder it is. How for me to go to bed and stay asleep. Matter of fact, my wife used to tell me how she used to say, you can be asleep within 15 seconds of your head hitting the pillow. But I couldn't stay asleep. Now, I can't go to sleep and much less stay asleep. And so I thought I'd buy that my pillow. Boy, I tell you, the best night of sleep that you've ever had. Now if yours is good, I ain't taking away. I don't go home and throw yours out the window. How? Because if it's good, you go home and get the best night's sleep how that you've ever had. But I'm going to tell you how mine did not give me the best night's sleep I've ever had. Matter of fact, I don't even have one how that I'll be sleeping on tonight. That's how good my night's sleep was on that. Hey man, anybody else like that? I'm just telling you how that even our product lines today how sometimes give us a false report. But let me say this to you tonight. How sadly I must report to you how that we can find some false reports in our pulpits. Watch out now, watch out. How you say, preacher, what you trying to say? I'm trying to tell you 2 Timothy chapter number 4 and verse number 4. We see that more real today how than we ever have in our days. What is that? And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Do you realize what a fable is? It's a softer term for a lie. Amen. And friend, I'm sorry to tell you, there's a lot of people standing behind a pulpit today and all they're wanting to do is draw in a crowd and all they're wanting to do is make everybody feel good but I want you to know I believe there's a place for I edifying the saints and encouraging the saints but there's sometimes that the man of God needs to drop the plow deep and just tell the truth and when it turns, the, it turns over the rocks it means we need to throw them out of the field sometimes we just need to tell the truth Hey, I said all that to say this. We're living in a world today how that would rather believe a lie right. than to hear the truth. Right. Yeah, man. 
Uh, we're living in a world today. Our churches, I'm telling you, I'm just going to call it like it is. Uh, they're growing, uh, growing because they're telling everybody that if you'll just do the best you can, if you'll just try to be the best person you can. Friend, the Bible tells us that the best we are is as a fifty rags in the sight of the Lord. I'm trying to tell you tonight, we're just an old bunch of rotten sinners and that to deserve to be in hell tonight. But the truth is, uh, there's a God God in glory that sent his son uh, so that he could redeem us and make us righteous before the sight of God. Woo! Amen. Hey, and so I tell you this tonight, if we'll ever get to the point that we get tired of how hearing the lies, how then we can turn how our focus again to the Lord, how where we can find truth today. Hey, I'm glad this book is still truth today. Hey, man, I want you to know, Dave, you can put your all in it. You can put your lock, stock, and barrel into the truth of the Word of God. For what He said, He will always do. Amen. What He said, He will do. Let me give you a few things and I'll let you go to the house tonight. I'm going to turn it over to the preacher and he can keep you all night. It's up to him. I just want to give you a few things that what the Lord said, He will do. First of all, tonight, He will redeem a repenting sinner. Hey, ain't you thankful for that tonight? Uh, you say, why, wow, preacher? Because every one of us in this building tonight uh, can relate to that sinner. The Bible tells us, uh, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Do you know what that means? We're all guilty of sin tonight. But I thank God uh, that He said that He will uh, redeem a repenting sinner. Matter of fact, there is a plan of salvation. Ain't you glad for that tonight? I'm glad there is a plan but thank God for a preacher uh, that told me about the plan one day that was willing to stand in the gap and point me to the narrow way not just let me go down the broad way but he pointed me to the narrow way uh, so that I could realize there's a God in glory that loved me in the, while I was a sinner uh, Jesus died uh, for me ain't you glad he'll redeem a repenting sinner praise God Woo! I'm trying to tell you tonight he'll do it. You know why he will? Because he said he would. I said he'll do it tonight because he said he'll do it. Hey, friend, I'll tell you, there wasn't no greater for him to swear on than his name. Hey, man. And he said how that he'll do it. Matter of fact, the Bible, you know this. Romans chapter 10, verse 10, 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord I shall be saved friend I'm here to tell you tonight how Jesus the Lord is still in the saving business in 2022 it ain't his will that none go to hell it ain't his hear me friend it ain't his will that none perish and go to hell tonight Hey, he'd give everything he could give. Give the greatest heaven had. Give the great. He didn't bring all the jewels high from glory and try to pay for our debt. Oh no, he didn't try. He didn't send them celestial ones, the angels of heaven, to pay because they couldn't do it. There wasn't enough money to buy. What did he do? I believe he bankrupt heaven. How when he took the very Son of God and he came, friend, and he came willingly to die. Why? So that a repenting sinner. I'm talking about somebody that's lost and don't know the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ how can be saved and know for sure that their name has been recorded in the Lamb. Hey, can I give y'all something tonight? You can be saved and know it. Yeah. 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 Hey, man. 
Hey, friend, I'm telling you, I'm glad I got that thing settled one day. I've heard people stand and say, I know that I know that I know how that I know I've been born again. And boy, I'd sit there with doubt in my heart. But one day I got that thing set out how that what he said he would do. I thank God. And when I asked him, how he just did what he said he'd do. And he saved my wretched soul. Hey, man. I got to be careful. Somebody's afraid I was going to kick that off last night. They was worried about that. I don't want you folks to be mad by kicking them off. What is that, a mom? Is that what that is? Them moms, please don't. I might all set that thing out of my head. Hey, what I'm trying to tell you tonight is uh, he'll save a repenting sinner. You say, preacher, how do you know that? How? Uh, because in Luke chapter 19, he saved a tax collector by the name of Zacchaeus. Woo! Hey, man. Zacchaeus was a wee little man. And he climbed up into a sycamore more tree to see what he could see. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, how many ever learned that song? How but Jesus came to the bottom of that tree and he looked up. Hey, hey, blesses my soul. You say, why, well, preacher? How Zacchaeus was looking how for the Lord. How but the Lord was looking for Zacchaeus. Matter of fact, he wasn't looking for him. He knew where he was. Yeah. 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 Hey, he just walked to the bottom of that sycamore tree and he said, Zacchaeus, come down out of that tree. How far your house will go today. I can't remember the song, but it's close. And what I'm trying to tell you today is, how Zacchaeus, all rotten, dirty, a cheating, lying, clacked, tax collector, got saved by the grace of God. Why? How because the Lord said, I hid do it, and he did it. Hallelujah. Hey, you say, preach how you know how to have Because in Luke chapter number 12, he saved an old Samaritan that was living in sin. Yeah. Woo! Hey, man, he said, I must needs go through there. He said, I must needs go through there. Boy, I tell you, I, I might not get y'all as quick as I thought of us. He said, I must needs go. Why? Why did he have to go through there? Because as a sinner woman, how that needed a Savior. Hey, man. And friend, can I tell you, she got... Woo, hallelujah. How she got more than what she came for. You realize that tonight she yeah. came to the well how to get a bucket of water. How about when she left, how she left her bucket and took the whole well. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, she, she came to get a bucket of water. But when she went home, she had the whole well. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hey, man, how many of us ever come to church and took home more than what you came for? Yeah. Hey, friend, I'm trying to tell you tonight. I'm trying to tell you, he'll save you. He'll save you. If you'll come repentant, he'll save you. Because he said he would tonight. Hey, boy, I think about that. Got to hurry. You say, preacher, how you know that? Because in Acts chapter number 8, he saved an Ethiopian eunuch. In Acts chapter number 9, he saved a Christian persecuting a sinner by the name of Saul. And he changed his name. And he is one of the greatest preachers beside the Lord Jesus Christ that ever walked on the face of the earth with a burden to bring the gospel to the Gentile nation. And that was the Apostle Paul. I'm telling you, he was dirty. He was rotten. He was mean. He hated the Bible. He hated the God of the Bible. He hated the church. But on the Damascus road, my friend, he had a head on collision with the Lord Jesus Christ. And it changed his life. I'm telling you, he'll save you tonight. He'll save you. In Acts chapter number 16, he saved a Philippian jailer. Yeah, man. He saved him that night. Earthquake came when Paul and Silas began to I pray and sing. Hey, man. I'm going to tell you, I think I'd have been doing something else other than praying and singing if I'd have been in jail. Come on now. Don't y'all get spiritual on me. Huh? And jail back then wasn't like it is today. Huh? I don't even like it the way it is today. I know I wouldn't have liked it back then. I ain't never been, but I was with the Rock of Ages now, so y'all don't get that crossed up. Hey, man. Hey, but I'm trying to tell you how I, I, they shut them bars, doors behind us. Yeah. I knew right quick I didn't want to go there and stay spending. the night. I didn't ask none of them fellas if I could spend the night. Yeah. And then we went into that lockdown. Oh, yeah. oh, friend, I believe it was worse than that. I believe they was down in the dirtiest part. I believe they was in stocks. Hey, hey man, I believe they were shackled down there. Hi, oh, friend, I don't believe there's no light down there about 12 o'clock. Oh, Paul, oh, he looked over Silas and said, what else we going to do? How oh, there ain't nothing. We can't watch gun smoke, can't we? 
Because we ain't getting much signal down here. <laughs> Uh, you said, preacher, what did he do? He said, well, uh, let's just pray to the God of glory. Yeah. And so one began to pray and the other one began to sing. Amazing grace. How you say, preacher, you know that singing? I don't know what they're singing. I just know they're singing praises. And about the time I told y'all the other night how uh, that praise will usher us into the presence of God. Friend, can I tell you this evening that God is not limited to your situation. He can show up your storm. He can show up your prison. He can show up your bondage. And you and him can have a revival. Hey, friend, I'm telling you, the earth begin to quake and the bars fell. You say, you believe that, preacher? I believe it. Say, why do you believe it? Because the Bible says I believe it happened just like that. And the Philippian jailer got saved. You say, preacher, how do you know that he'll save a repentant Savior? Because on June 18, 1982, at Fern Hill Baptist Church, Hi, oh, friend, I'm telling you, I came to the well. I came to a Bible school. Friday night of Bible school at Fern Hill Baptist Church on Fern Hill Road in Troutman, North Carolina. Hey, friend, ain't nobody. Can I say, whoo, can I say this to you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I say this to you tonight? How the governor didn't know where that church was located. How he didn't know that it was a Bible school going on. The president didn't have a clue. Matter of fact, I ain't sure the mayor I knew what was going on in the little outskirts of the town, but I can tell you, yeah. the great creator of yeah. heaven and earth yeah. knew what was going on that yeah. night. And as the gospel was preached, there was something took place in a little seven-year-old boy's heart uh, that I realized I need to be saved yeah. by the grace of God. And it went around the back of the baptistry to the preacher's study. And he began to show me in the Bible what I must do to be saved. And I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. He said, he saved me that night because he said that he would. Yes, hey. hey. Man, I tell you what. Hey, I want you to know. Here, just last week of Bible school, this year at our church. And we had Bible school, brethren. We do it nice like everybody else. How we pray that youngins get saved. Y'all do that around here? I love Bible school. One reason, because he got saved at it. But I've seen others get saved in Bible school. <laughs> Friend, I'm telling you, it's not a wasted time. Right, right. It's not a wasted time to act like a kid Amen. once in a while. Just to show them kids that you love them. Amen. It's not a wasted time to have to clean up a glass of tea that keeps getting knocked right, over. Right. I'm trying to encourage you tonight. It's not to pick up paper. I'm talking about get done Bible school and styrofoam cups all over the playground. I'm talking about this one knock it over and you sweep it up about the time that gets uh, swept up. You got to go over here and mop this one up. Hey friend, I'm here to tell you I know it gets tiring. I mean you get off work and rush over here. I don't have Bible school but I'm telling you there's some youngins that need to hear it at a young age before the world gets a hold to it and tries to tell them they Ain't nothing to it. I mean, just tell them why. How the Lord will save them in yep. childlike faith. Why? Because He said He would. Hey, and I got to tell you this. Hey, Come on, Ellie. This year, Bible school, we prayed and had our final, final night. That final night, nobody came, got saved. Preacher, I was disappointed. I ain't going to lie to you. I was disappointed. You say, preacher, why is you disappointed? Because I was expecting. Yeah. 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 You know why we don't ever see nothing? Because we don't never come expecting something. Exactly right. <laughs> you know why your bucket never gets full? Because you ain't got it right side up yeah. when you come. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Feel it. Feel it. Yeah. And so I was disappointed, preacher. That Sunday morning came. I believe it was that Sunday morning right after Bible school. Gentleman come in our church. I'd never seen him before. And I was... Uh, he come come around and we had a good in that Sunday. Yeah. I'm talking about a good. Yeah. <laughs> y'all, I talked to y'all yeah. about that. Y'all know what that is. Yeah. I mean, we had a good. Yeah. We had a gentleman ain't been in our church in a long time, been through some sicknesses. He come to that Sunday morning, first time we'd seen him back, and he was battling pancreatic cancer. Yeah. This gentleman, and he stood up and testified some of his about some of his. Times. Well, this gentleman sitting back here in the back that I'd never seen before went by and shook his hand, told him it was good to have him, appreciate him, how being in church. And I know y'all do that stuff. We told him we was glad to have him. And he sat back there and he got in on that thing. And he was in the service and heard this gentleman standing. Nobody knew this. Well, after church, he come to me. His name was J.R. 
He come to me and he said, Preacher, I need to talk to you. And I could tell he was really burdened and troubled in his heart. He said, I need to talk to you, Preacher. And he sat down and he began to talk to me and, and just tears running down his face. And he said, Preacher, I got diagnosed last week with uh, pancreatic cancer. And he said, uh, he said Preacher, I, they've given me six months to live. He said, I was fine, started having some trouble, healthy. He drove one of them NASCAR haulers that hauls them cars around. He said, I've done that, made good money and all that things. But he said, preacher, I started not feeling right. And I went to get a checkup and, and they run some tests. Now, you know how that starts. And he said, things ain't right. And he said, uh, he said, preacher, I'm scared. And I said, brother, I understand. And let me tell y'all something. Let me give y'all some advice. Preacher don't always know what to say. Exactly right. And brother, I'll tell you, my heart broke for him. I never met him. And so I thought, man, Lord just he said, man, if he's got six months to live, you better take the opportunity to ask him if he knows where he's going. Sure. And so I asked him, I said, Jerry, let me ask you a question. I said, now, nah, I'm not telling you you're going to die in six months. Nobody knows that but the Lord. I said, I may die before I leave, get out the end of this parking lot here and make it back to my house. I said, I, I may go for you too. I'm not saying it like that. But I am saying it like this. Uh, there is an eternity. And I said, there's only two places. One's heaven and one's hell. And I said, I believe it like this, that when you draw your last breath here, you're going to one or the other. I believe it like that. And as I told, began to talk to him, big tears running down his eyes. And he said, preacher, hey preacher, I need that salvation. And I said, man, I'll tell you, you might have it. I'm, I said, let me show you in the Bible. No, so it ain't my opinion. And it ain't nobody else's opinion. It ain't religion's opinion. But let me show you what God says you must do to be saved. And I read him over there, John 3, 16. I for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And then I read him over there in Romans chapter number 10. How about 9 and read him those verses right there. How those verses that I just read to you. And that gentleman bowed his head and accepted the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ as his personal oh, Savior. Yeah. And he got up, man, there was a smile on his face. And he said, Preacher, he said, Preacher, there's a bird, man, and there's an old song yeah. that says, Our birds are lifted at Calvary. When you come out from under that weight of sin and get saved, yeah. there's a load that's lifted yes, off of you. Yes, sir. Listen to this now. He told me he came a couple more weeks. And I talked to him, and, and man, he was a blessing. Oh, my. Well, he said, Preacher, I'm going to go down to the beach and visit my brother for a couple of weeks. Then I ain't seen Preacher. I didn't know where he lived. I didn't know nothing about him. Just saw him a week or so. Didn't have an opportunity to get to know much about him. We didn't know where he went. We didn't know what happened to him. And I was reading the paper. I threw the paper the other day. And I was going through the obituaries and I saw a picture. And I said, wait a minute, I know that gentleman from somewhere. And I didn't recognize the name. But I kept on looking at him and just reading what it said about him. And I said, that's J.R. That's J.R. You say, preacher, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to tell you He'll save you because yeah. He said He'll save you. Right. And He'll save you when you call upon His name. Yeah. And He'll give you a sure. You say, preacher, what? Hey, friend, He didn't make it six more months. Hey, he, the Lord was dealing with him right there. Yeah. If He had put it off, He said, I'll come back. Let me go visit my brother and I'll come back to church. I wanted to do it on a certain day. Friend, that was His time. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Yeah. Don't put it off to tomorrow. I, friend, I believe with all my heart, I based on this profession of faith, that J.R. walked from this life into the next life. Why? Because he'll do it because he said he would do it. I got so much to tell y'all. lady came to our church, was at our church Wednesday night. I got to get back up here. Came to our church after the service on Wednesday night. Brother, she said, Preacher, can I talk to you for a minute? I said, Yes, ma'am. I was still up on the platform. She walked up and she said, Preacher, there's a fellow that I work with at, at work. And he wanted me to ask you about this. I said, Okay, what is it? I'll do my best to, to help you. He, she said, He was in the military. And he was trained to kill people. Y'all with me? Yeah. Come on. I'm talking about he was trained. to. That's what he did. Every night, every day, that's what he did. And you know why he done that? So you and I could be sitting here today. Right. 
But she said this. She said, he's troubled, preacher. Because he reads in the Bible where it says, thou shalt not kill. And he's troubled. He said, how can I have forgiveness when I had to kill? He said, I don't want to talk about it. I'm not telling you anything about what I had to do or what I did. They give me a gun and train me to do it. I did it. And the Bible says, thou shalt not kill. I looked at her and I said, ma'am, go back and tell him. Go back and tell him that David was a man after God's own heart. And when he got back to town, the ladies there in the street said Saul killed his thousands, but David killed his tens thousands. She said, he knows that preacher. I said, man, I thought that was going to help you. I said, so what's he so troubled about? That shall not kill. I said, he, he can forgive you. And she said, he knows that, but he just can't get over that. He just can't get over that. I said, well, what about this one? He's broke that one, but I broke some of the other ones. And if I broke one, I'm guilty of all of them. Yep. Right. What That's the right. book says. That's right. What is it? She said, yeah, preacher's got that. I said, well, this is the only thing I got for you. Go back and ask him a whosoever is. Yeah. Tell him to explain to you whosoever yeah. is. I said, just go back and get him to tell you to define a whosoever. Hallelujah. She said, I didn't think Amen. about that preacher. I said, go back and see what he says about that and come back. Because if he says whosoever, and he defines it the way it is, it means anybody. Doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter how you've been. Doesn't matter how, Doesn't matter this or that. Doesn't matter the color of your skin. How, doesn't matter what country you're from. It doesn't matter what church you're a part of. That whosoever means anybody that shall call upon the name of the Lord. I shall be saved. I said, you go tell that soldier he was killing so that I could share the gospel. He was protecting so that we could have the freedom that we have here in this nation. And you tell him I appreciate it, but you tell him the God I serve, I can look beyond his faults and can look beyond his failures and can look beyond his sins and can save his dirty soul. Why? Because he said he would. Man, I ain't even got off the first thing. I might have to find a quitting place before I ever get started. Hey, he'll save a repent. He'd do it because he said he would. <clears throat> Let me give you this one. He'll restore, he'll restore a repenting saint. Yeah. This will help somebody tonight. This will help somebody. He'll restore. You know why he said 1 John 1 9? I like it. If we'll confess, he's faithful to forgive. Yeah. Amen. He'll restore. He'll restore a repenting saint. That's that crowd that's saved. You know, just because you saved don't mean you don't mess up. I thought about Peter. Peter. When I, when, I, when I mentioned Peter, when I mentioned Peter, what's something you think about? Oh, hey amen. The nine Christ. Peter. Y'all know who Peter was? He's one of the twelve, right? Yes. Matter of fact, he's more than one of the twelve. He was one of the inner circle disciples. Right. Oh, Peter, James, and John. Yep. He, he was one that was privileged to go up on the Mount of Transfiguration yeah, right. yep. when Jesus Christ revealed the God side of him. That's right. Peter got that privilege. Yeah. Peter was warned. Peter was favored among the Lord Jesus Christ. But Peter denied. Right? right. When we think about That's that. Right. We read that over in the book of Matthew. Matter of fact, I think it's mentioned in three of the Gospels. That account, he come out of the Garden of Gethsemane. The Bible says that he followed Jesus away far off. Y'all heard right. preaching on all that stuff. Yeah. Then he was sitting in the crowd and they come to him and said, hey, wasn't you with him? Yep. And he said, no, I wasn't with him. Right. Yeah. Then he come another time and said, hey, wasn't you with him? Yeah. And, the, and Peter said, no, I wasn't with him. I don't know him. Oh, and then they come the third time and the Bible said he began to curse right. and swear. Yeah. That's what yeah. it said. And right when he said it that third time, the cock crowed, the rooster crowed. And the Bible says that Peter went out and wept bitterly. He was sorry. He was sorry and repentant, repentful. I don't even know if that's a word. Repenting. Repentful. Y'all know what that means, don't you? That means the act of repenting. There you go. He wept bitterly. Huh? He was more than sorry that he got caught. 
Yeah, that's that's right. what I mean. That's right. He was more than sorry. You know, you know what? The Lord wasn't even there, standing there right there beside him. I don't believe when he heard that cock crow. I don't believe that. It was that, that conviction. That's right. That conviction that called him to be repentful. And he wept bitterly. But today, all we think about is that when we hear Peter, is he denied Christ? But in Acts chapter number two, we find this same man that denied Christ. What's he doing? He's preaching. Who's he preaching to? He's possibly preaching to some of the same people that stood in Pilate's hall or stood at the cross and said, crucify him. And now he's got a backbone like a sola. And he's preaching to them salvation. Matter of fact, you'll find those words again in Acts chapter 2. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You say, preacher, what are you trying to say? You may be here tonight and you've messed up. There may be some things in your head. And this is what happens. The old line, I done told you, I'm talking about telling the truth. The old line, slew-footed, no good for nothing devil has done told you that you can't never be used again for the glory of God. That's what He told you. There's churches filled across this land of church members that's messed up. Yes, sir. Yeah, right. yes, sir. That's right. Now, I, I believe there's got to be a repentance. I believe that. I've got to believe, I believe there's got to be a proven time. I believe that. I believe that. But I believe when that happens, there can be a restoring time. Yeah, come on. And you can feel the presence of God again like you used to. Yes, and you can raise your hand again. Um, hey, you can. <laughs> kids don't do that. You can stick your tongue out at the devil <laughs> and say, My victory ain't in you. Yep. My victory's in Hallelujah. Him. Yes, sir. Hey, He did it. He did it. He'll do it because He said that He would. Quickly, quickly, got to hurry. He will receive the prayers of His children. He'll receive the prayers of His children because He said He would. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Hey, friend, here we find Peter again in Acts chapter 12. Peter was in prison, and he was be put to death the next day. You know what blesses my heart about that? Peter was in prison. He had done been told that he was going to be beheaded the next day. I'm martyred for the cause of Christ. And there he is sitting between two soldiers and the angel God. Has to wake him up. I mean, things. I told y'all a while ago. I don't sleep good because the cares and cumbers and stress of this world. But I, I guarantee you, I wouldn't been able to sleep that night if I knew. Huh? And old Peter on the shoulder of that soldier. Well, that's the peace of God. What was going on? What was going on while Peter was getting ready to be beheaded? Huh? You know, Peter had that peace because he said he's a winner either way. Whether I go, whether I stay. That's hard. That's hard. That's tough. That ain't easy to do. But while he was there, there was a church. They was on their knees praying. And the angel of God come, shook him. Peter, Peter, Peter. Peter, Peter, let's get up. It's time to go. I mean, Peter asleep. Yeah. And the angel of God woke him up. The Bible said that the chains fell off of him. They walked, Wait. knocked on the door. <laughs> that little girl came to the door and looked. And she went back. I don't even think they believed it was Peter out at the door. But Peter was standing. You say, preacher, why did all that happen? Because we serve a God that hears and yeah. answers yeah. prayers. Amen. 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 I've seen prayers answered in my life that there was nobody else could do it. I know it. Now, friend, I told you the other day, I'm going to hurry, 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 hurry. I told you the other day, COVID has touched every family high in this building. Some of you have followed loved ones to the graveyard with COVID. We did it in our church. I'm one of my dearest friends. I used to play music with him. I'm telling you, I'm one of my dearest friends and followed him out to the graveyard. How about in 2021? I believe that's right. On New Year's Day, I called the hospital my mother. 
mother. How they told us. I'm going to tell you this in a hurry. I just didn't encourage about prayer. I called the, uh, how the ambulance for her. Took her to the hospital. Three days she was in ICU. They called us and told us. Said listen. If she loses a little more percentage of the breathing on the BiPAP. We're going to put her on life support. And most of the time. How they don't come back from life support. And you folks have been there. And I don't understand why God does one thing. And God does this. The only thing I know God is right in either situation. Yeah. But I know we prayed. And you folks. Some of you folks here prayed. Up for our family. And the God of all glory. Heard the prayers of some people. And touched her. And she sung in our choir. Of this last Wednesday night. She don't carry oxygen. She walks yeah. more than she ever has. I just tell you that. Uh, today. To tell you that the God we serve. Can hear and answer our prayers. It's not a prayer you can pray that God cannot answer. Woo! I gotta hurry. Hey, receive prayers. Let me give this. He will return for the saved. He returns at John 14, 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also. I done, I done preached a little bit about that before I ever started preaching. I'm going to give you this last one. I, yeah, I'll, I'll preach on that when I said the best is yet to come. Yeah. Yeah. He's coming. Let me make one statement about that. It's going to be a glorious day because of the reunion. And I, I would never say anything disrespectful up here tonight. And I know everybody in this building has got loved ones that you're looking forward to seeing. That you believe with all your heart's going on to be with the Lord. Moms, dads, children, husbands, wives. Everybody's got family. You're looking forward to seeing when you get there. And it's going to be a glorious reunion. But let me tell you, church, I don't believe when we get there, it's going to be about our loved ones. I think it's going to be, and don't you, don't you get discouraged because you are going to see those that are saved by the grace. If you got it, there's some dear folks in our church. I got some loved ones. I got some loved ones that I'm looking forward to seeing. I got some folks. I'm looking forward to see some of them Bible folks. Huh? I'm looking forward. I've read the story, but ain't it good to hear it from the person that experienced the story? I tell you, I want to find them Hebrew boys. Yes, sir. I want to ask them about it. I want to ask them, how'd y'all do that? How that our God will deliver us. But if he don't, he they said that. But if he don't, we still ain't gonna bow. Amen. Tell me that story again, boys. Yeah. I just want to hear it. Paul, Paul is one of I, I talk a lot about the apostle Paul. Peter, I want to ask him about that. How loud did that co- that rooster crow? Yeah. <laughs> I bet that he'd say that's the crow that was heard around the world. <laughs> huh? I want to ask some of them. But folks, I believe with all my heart that when we finally make it to the other side, it's going to be about crawling to the feet of Jesus. Yes. And looking up and saying... Glory, glory, glory to the Lamb of God that took away the sins of the world. What a day. Glorious day. He's coming back. Last thing and I'm done. He will reject those that don't know Him. He'll do that because He said He would. Some of the saddest verses in all the Bible is found in what I'm fixing to read you right now. In Matthew chapter number 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done wonderful works. And then will I confess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in nicotine. We're headed into the holiday seasons, church. We're fixing to celebrate Thanksgiving and then right on to Christmas. The world knows the story of Bethlehem. They may not want to admit it. They may not want to acknowledge it. But they know the story. They know the story. You say the name Jesus, they know who that is. 
They know that. A lot of the world knows the Scripture. But the problem I see in that verse of Scripture, does He know you? Does He know you? I'll give you this. If there's anybody that we could bring before us tonight that would say He'll do what He said He would do, is Adam and Eve. The Lord told Adam in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, you can eat of any fruit of the, any tree of the garden except for the tree of knowledge. And if you eat of that tree, you'll surely die. God said it, and He did what He said. You say, how you know, preacher, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 4, the serpent said, ye shall not surely die. Eve took of the fruit, and she didn't die immediately. When Adam came along, I believe, I, I'm just telling you, he, he was expecting, you took the fruit, he was expecting to see her body laying on the ground. Because God said, you'll surely die. She wasn't dead. And so then Adam began to think, maybe the serpent was right. That you'll not die from eating that. And so he ate of it too. But in Genesis chapter 5 and verse number 5, we read these words. Adam lived 930 years. And you read these words. And he died. You know why? Because God will do what He said He will do. It don't make Him unfair. It don't make Him unholy. It don't make Him unjust. He will do what He said He will do. And He'll be a just God doing it. He'll be a holy God doing it. And He'll be a righteous God doing it. And He'll be a fair God doing it. Because you and I have heard the Word. And He'll do what He said He will do. As we stand to our feet with our heads bowed and eyes closed. Church, there's a better day coming. And we ought to rejoice in that. But if you're here tonight and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you don't know Him tonight, if you don't know Him tonight, I encourage you to get around this altar. No doubt in my mind there'll be somebody here from this church that'd be glad. I'll be glad to show you in the Bible what you must do to be saved. Friend, I'm telling you, don't get to that. Hey! I say this all the time. You can die and go to hell and be a faithful member of a church because being faithful to the church don't save you. You can die and go to hell and be a faithful tither to the church. And I think you ought to be faithful to the church. I think you ought to be a faithful tither giver to the church. I think you ought to participate in the church. I think you ought to get in on the church. I think you do. God still uses and blesses and works through the local church. I think you do. Friend, when it all comes down to it, Does He know you tonight? Maybe you're here this evening and you're that one I've told, I mentioned early, that have messed up before the Lord. You ain't been what you should. You've done some things and the old devil has convinced you that you can't be used and and you can't give Him the glory and you can't be a part. Can I tell you tonight, He'll forgive you and He'll use you and He'll bless you and He'll use you to do great mighty things. Peter preached and 3,000 people were saved in Acts chapter number 2. Same one that denied Him. Found preaching. Sharing the gospel. He'll forgive you. Oh, if you need to pray tonight, Lord, it's touch your heart. Thank you for letting me be here. Father, bless. Have thy will and way. We'll thank you and praise you for that you do. Lord, we'll bless your holy name. Thank you for the Word of God. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for this camp meeting. Thank you for this church. God, I pray, Lord, tonight that you touch the invitation time. Lord, I pray you'd get the glory if there be one here tonight lost. Please, God, J.R. didn't know when his, when the role would be called up yonder for him. He didn't know that just in a few, two and a half months later, the doctor told him six months. Two and a half months later, after he bowed and accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Savior, he slipped out into eternity. And God, I believe if he was true, he was sincere in his heart. Lord, he stepped into the celestial, onto the celestial shores of heaven. God, please don't let nobody leave here tonight 
and not know for sure where they're going. Have thy will and way. We thank you and praise you. Appreciate this preacher and his good wife and his church family. Pray that you, Lord, I pray you'd pour your blessings out on Hope Baptist Church and every church that's represented here tonight. We'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Heads bowed and eyes closed, folks. It's time to do business with the Lord. First and foremost, if you're here tonight and you don't know that your sins have been forgiven, you don't know that if today was your last day on earth, it would be your first day in heaven. If you don't know that right now, would you step out and come to this altar of prayer? Would you do that? God's speaking to your heart, friend. Don't put him off. Brother Wesley told you, the word of God says, today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. You don't know. I'm not trying to scare you into anything, but I'm going to tell you right now, there's not a one of us in here that can say for sure we'll be here tomorrow. Not a one of us. Lord God says there's a step between us and death. That's just the reality of it. That's just the truth of it. Not trying to scare you. That's just the truth of it. Friend, if you don't know tonight, will you come? Will you come right now? You don't have to be ashamed to come to Jesus Christ. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us in here. But you need Jesus. You come. How about it, Christians, tonight? Is, is your peace gone? Is your, is your joy gone? Is your assurance gone tonight? Is the old devil telling you because you've messed up, you can't be used of God, you can't, you can't serve God, you can't, you can't do anything? Why don't you come tonight knowing that God is one that will forgive a repentant Christian? Will you do that? First John tells us he's faithful and just. Hallelujah. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. If we'll confess, if we repent of those sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. Will you come tonight? I can tell you right now, there's not going to be a revival in anybody's life until we deal with the sin that's in our life. Will you come? Altar's open. Door's going to play one more time through that. If you need to come, you come. Thank you, Jesus. God dealing with your heart, you come. Our Heavenly Father, we come before the throne of grace tonight. We are thankful for what we have been told, what's been shared with us from the Word of God tonight. <laughs> oh, what a comfort it is to know that you'll do what you say you will do what a comfort it is to know that you cannot lie and God everything we read in your word is true and it will come to pass because you do what you say you'll do God that that means that if those that are here tonight die rejecting Jesus Christ that means they're going to die and go to hell but they don't have to they can turn their life over to Jesus but it also means for those that are born again tonight that we can lift up our head because our Redeemer draweth nigh. God, whoo, Jesus said, I've gone to prepare a place for you. And if I've gone to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Lord, God, we thank you that you're going to do what you say you'll do. And that one day we'll be with you in glory. Thank you for Brother Wesley. Thank you for his family. Thank you for his church. God, I just ask that your blessings be upon him upon his family, upon his church. God, you just, you give him the rest that he needs. Give him traveling mercies back home. God, thank you for making a way for him to be here for camp meeting. Yes. We have appreciated the messages that you've given to him to share with us. And we give you praise for that. But Lord, we thank you for this camp meeting. It's been good. Oh God, it's been good. You've helped us, Lord. God, you've, you've touched our hearts. You've, you've done a work in our lives and we thank you for it. And we just want to give you praise. I pray, God, your blessings upon everybody that's here tonight, that you just continue to work in all of our hearts, that we might be drawn closer to you, and we'll give you the praise. We love you, and we thank you for loving us. We give you praise in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Folks, would you do this? Would you just give Brother Wesley a, a, a hand? Say you right now. Mighty, mighty good messages, amen. Appreciate it. Is, huh? Landon? Landon's birthday? Well, happy birthday. Where's he at? Where's Landon at?
Landon, happy birthday, brother. Amen. Happy birthday. Amen. Brother Wesley, would you, would you go back to the back, let people greet you back there, you and your wife. That'd be great. We'd appreciate it. God bless you, folks. Thank you for coming.